What's happening, beautiful people? Welcome back to Grateful Panic Knife Reviews. I am so glad that you stopped by, and I hope at the end of the video you are too. Uh, today we're going to do a quick review on the uh, Civivi Keen Natter, and before we do that, let's go ahead and get a quick panic dump and beverage check out of the way. And today I was carrying the Monterey Bay Knives EWC in green micarta and carbon fiber. And I was also carrying the Blade HQ exclusive uh, CRKT Squid, also in green micarta, sans the carbon fiber. Um, my pen and sack today were the Alox Pioneer and the uh, Machine Era <clears throat> stainless steel markup. And uh, the flashlight was the Rovivon. Aurora A23, and I really dig this flashlight, kind of, uh, it functions well, I'm not quite the fondest of the, the user interface, but it's, you know, it's fine. Uh, the thing I really don't like is that the battery's integral, and that uh, charging port wore out, like, really quick, <clears throat> so you have to be real, um, you have to pay attention when you're plugging it in, make sure it's charging, uh, and as far as the Hank goes, Little Lone Star Hank, Hank's uh, uh, Grateful Dead Hank, and ooh the beverage. Um, drinking on a little bit of Hopsecutioner from Terrapin Brewing Company, out of Athens, Georgia. Sleepy little college town, University of Georgia. Um, let's go ahead and give a big old Grateful Panic cheers to. Uh, our good friend Brad of Mild Mannered EDC. Cheers, Brad. Here's looking at you, kid. Uh, that's gonna about do it, guys. Um, so I guess that means it's time to dive on down and get up close and personal with the Savivi Keen Natter. <laughs> guys so like I said today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Keen Natter from Civivi. Let's go ahead and get these specs out of the way so that we can get to the good stuff then meat and taters and what we're looking at <clears throat> is an overall length of eight and one quarter inches. We got a blade length of three and a half inches with a cutting edge of three and a half inches. And we have a blade width of one inch and a blade stock thickness of 150 thousandths. And this blade comes to us courtesy of Bowler and it is in the N690 flavor. It's got a compound grind on it with a uh, hollow grind and a flat grind and it is in a very nice stone wash finish. As far as the handle goes, we have a handle length of four and three quarters inches and a handle width of three quarters of an inch. And I uh, put the calipers on it earlier and it measured out right at about 495 thousandths, so just a hair under half an inch thick. As far as handle materials go, uh, we're looking at some nice natural uh, canvas micarta and we have some black coated uh, stainless steel liners it is a liner lock and let's see the lock up here it looks like right around 25 i'm just going to call it 25 percent and leave it at that uh, i don't know if you can see in here yeah we got some a little bit of internal milling to lighten the load a little bit right this guy is running on bearings and I'm gonna tell you the action on it is is silly uh, it's got dual thumb stud deployment and you've got a flipper deployment and it's even got you got these fullers 
on both sides that the uh, the thumb studs kind of sit in, which I think that's kind of cool right there. I think that looks pretty nifty. A little different, but you can middle finger flick with the fuller. Yeah. And I think you can also, uh, let's see, I'm gonna find it. Yep, you can middle finger flick with that thumb stud. It's just a matter of locating it. Oh man, that is ridiculous. That action is stupid. This right here, this is, I noticed this with the uh, riffle. These screws that they're using, they've got some fairly deep sockets. I haven't put a, a Torx bit in it yet, but all of them, even the pivot screw is it's fairly deep. And going back to uh, the deployment methods, the flipper tab does have uh, some nice jimping on it. And it is, I mean, it's, it's fairly functional, especially right there on the back of the flipper tab right here. This not so much. It's not what I'd call slick, but it doesn't provide any traction at all, really. But it works good in the light switch method and the push button method. And it, even if you kind of kind of fumble your your deployment, it's still gonna it's not gonna fail. It's still gonna fully deploy and lock up. Let's see what the centering looks like on this guy. Pretty dead nuts. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm, they, uh, so BB has really. I mean, they've never been a uh, bad knife company. I mean, from the from the get, they've made good knives, but. Now, I do have one, and it's not really, it's not really a gripe. It's not a negative about the knife. It's just a matter of personal preference, and this personal preference is more than likely stemming from uh, laziness, and it's the fact that there is a slight recurve on this blade. But I uh, suck at <laughs> at sharpening recurves, and and but I did learn my lesson on attempting because uh, I. Uh, was really really wanting a uh, a Purvis uh, primordial, and you know the re reviews were basically saying, hey, there just shouldn't be an issue with uh, our using a uh, a guided sharpening system. And I've got a KME, so I said, well, shoot, I'll go ahead and get one. Should be no problem. Well, what I failed to take into account is there probably <clears throat> are accessories for the guided system that you would need in order to uh, sharpen a recurve and I mean it's just kind of common sense your sharpening stone is flat the recurve is it's built right into the name curved it's probably not going to work well I tried and I ended up with a little re-dip so um, there's any southern boys out there they're very very familiar with a re-dip so but yeah if you see right there I don't know how well you can see it, but yeah, it's just a kind of a drastic dip where it kind of <laughs> put all the deep the recurve into one spot. So that kind of turned me off to knives with any fashion of recurve to them. So, but I have done some research, and KME does have a um, it's called a Hewitt jewel stick that. Is you, you can get and use to uh, to sharpen recurves, and basically it's just it's it's a three-sided sharpening rod, and the sides are oval shaped, and it's got each side is a different grit. The uh, it's got 270, 600, and 1800, and then the wicked edge has um, it has recurve sharpening stones. And from all I could find, uh, the only information I could find was basically they have a 400 and a 600, but I guess better than nothing. Um, but both of them said, you know, they could be used to sharpen anything from, you know, say a kukri or, you know, just a small recurve. Uh, like, supposedly they're good for all that. I can't vouch for them. I haven't tried them, either one of them personally, but just putting that information out there that those do exist. So, other than the... Uh, a little bit of recurve on this guy. I ain't got no problem with it at all. Um, I'm still the, the riffle is still uh, beating this one out by a little bit, and I can't quite put my finger on why. I do wish the riffle had 
the action that this one did because it, it and I th basically it's not that the uh, riffle has bad action it's just the, the blades lighter than this one and the weight of this blade just causes it to kind of float down but I mean that's just insanity right there guys yeah this is a uh, it's quite quite the nice knife and I, I highly recommend it I don't think uh, you can go wrong buying it I mean it's going to perform very very well I mean if you're looking for something to uh, clear brush with this probably isn't what you want to look for but uh, if you're looking for just a good reliable uh, EDC knife I don't see any problem with this I don't have any problem at all recommending this knife to anybody. And so it definitely it definitely gets the uh, Grateful Panic seal of approval. One and three quarters thumbs up. And that's about all I have to say about this one, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, got some information you were looking for. And uh, make sure if you this is your first time here, uh, go ahead and, and subscribe and, and like the video because that helps us out a lot and it helps keep us around to, you know, pass the information on to you guys and, you know, maybe semi sort of act as a buffer between uh, the consumer and the manufacturer so that hopefully uh, they can't, you know, be pulling the wool over your eyes, you know, because we're kind of your advocates to the manufacturers to say, hey, they're not going to put up with you putting out uh, sub subpar products. So tighten up every chance you get um but that's about it guys appreciate you stopping by and you are more than welcome to uh, come back anytime but until next time how about go out there and edc your ass off and do something nice for somebody thanks guys bye bye